Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to trace through a wiring diagram. It is so much easier if you print out a wiring diagram before you start diagnosing or wiring anything up and trace through power and ground. Um, simple diagrams aren't as hard to deal with, but when you're dealing with a big old mess of wiring on a diagram, it can get really confusing real fast. And even my later years as a technician, I would always print out wiring diagrams and trace them through if they were just a bit too complicated. Um, so don't feel like that's just a beginner thing to do. That's what a lot of professionals do. Um, it makes things a lot easier um, and faster. Faster. Again, we're always trying to be faster and, and more efficient at what we're doing. So I'm going to flip the camera here. Okay, so here is our wiring diagram. This is a horn circuit for a 2001 Toyota MR2. Um, kicking it old school here. Um, I've got three colors here that I'm going to use. I'm going to use red uh, for power. Green we are going to use for our ground. And blue is going to be our load. Identifying your load can be easiest first. This diagram is so easy because it's simply just the horn circuit. This is so nice. And in newer cars, diagrams like this are few and far between. That's why I was looking at 2001 uh, Toyota MR2 horn circuit to get something to show you uh, on easier. But So I'll show you on an easier circuit, and then we'll just sort of work our way a little bit to a harder circuit, and we'll, we'll work our way through that. So first things first, let's go ahead and circle our loads here. Uh, what's really nice, and you might be able to see here, the load actually grounds through the body of the horn. Um, so that will be a simple and easy ground circuit. So now we know where our load is. Let's trace our load back to its power point. Uh, so we know that it's both of these are getting voltage um, from the same. You can see here, they're not sharing it. If I had a wire coming into the horn, coming out of the horn, going into the next, coming out, that would be a series circuit. But since I've got power coming in, just because it's sharing the connection for power doesn't mean anything. I'm still gonna have 12 volts going into this horn, 12 volts going into this horn. You can see that traces up to, and it even tells us here on the left side of the firewall in the engine compartment is our horn relay. Um, this is normally open until you energize the switch down here. So if we look at this here, we can trace this. As long as the horn switch is on, I will have, let's see, we've got hot at all times, our horn fuse that is powering both our coil side and our switch side of the relay. So if, if you are pressing on the horn switch, and right here, and, and I, I forgot to put our load, because uh, this is a relay circuit, hopefully you watch the relay videos, our load on our coil side is actually, or I'm sorry, on our relay coil side is actually right there. So we've got two sides of the circuit here with different loads. Um, now with ground, we know that on the coil side, our horn switch, what you control here, you need to close the switch in order to provide a ground. If you do not close the switch, oops, that didn't work out as good as I thought, there is no continuity, therefore I cannot create a magnetic field, therefore we can't close the switch side or the horn relay. So when you close the switch, I will have voltage coming into my coil side and nothing coming out because it's producing work, it's actually producing a magnetic field. So I will have power then going into, sorry, into my switch and out of my switch side of the relay, then going into my horns, right? If I have no continuity on this side, then this will not close and I will have no power coming into my horns. Um, so I like tracing through with colors like this. This circuit, it's almost not necessary, not almost, it's not really necessary unless it makes you feel more comfortable um, simply because uh, this is just the horn circuit. Most of the time you're not dealing with something like this. I wanna get into something like this though, right? Cause this one is a little bit more of a headache. This is a fuel pump, that's well, technically one of three engine performance circuits. So you'll notice up here it says engine performance, while the other ones it said exactly horn or exactly uh, reverse lights. This has a bunch of circuits. So we've got a bunch of relays up here. We don't know what they're for quite yet, but they do say ignition, uh, EFI. Um, 
Then we've got a fuel pump, which is actually what we're going to be looking if at. If I look down, um, I've got all kinds of stuff going on down here. I've got a combination meter. I've got a light that is actually the symbol for an LED. Um, I've got uh, all kinds of fun stuff in here. I don't need to be dealing with all of this. Let's say I've got a fuel pump issue. I have diagnosed that I'm not getting any power to a fuel pump, right? So this is a fuel pump circuit. It's showing my fuel pump right here. Let me see if I can actually zoom in. Okay, so if we're looking at this here, um, what we're looking at is, again, let's use blue, appropriate colors here. We've got blue for our load. This is our fuel pump right there. Right, you can even see the little piece of candy looking motor right there. That's our fuel pump. Now we need to trace ground side. There's one in and one out. You can see right there, it's, uh, it tells us a little ground symbol. I know it's hard for you guys to see probably. I will try to share this circuit with you um, via canvas so you can see closely. But we've got ground. Uh, and you can even tell because it says G905. That G is telling us that that's a ground as well, but it's always accompanied by a little symbol there. So we know that that's our ground. Nothing's controlling the ground. In this case, it's what is controlling power into it. So let's trace our power here. Um, this one's a little bit more complicated. I've got power coming from, trying to draw this really lightly here, from this first relay, it says circuit opening relay. So this relay needs to be closed in order, and we'll trace that, let's say the relay is closed. Um, our relay over here is going to have to be closed as well. So this is going through a circuit opening relay and an EFI main relay. We'll look at what controls them here in a moment. Um, but for right now, we can see, trying to separate all this here, that this is coming from an EFI fuse. Okay, so we know that from our EFI fuse, I should uh, be getting power into my EFI relay. Um, and if my EFI relay closes, if my EFI relay closes, it will then give power to my circuit opening relay here. So let's uh, go ahead and see what controls these. I'm gonna just get rid of this ink here now that we've traced through that. Um, if you're doing this with a highlighter, if you have any thin tipped highlighters, it makes things a little bit easier. I'm using dry erase markers, which are not the easiest. Um, but let's let's figure out where our, our, what's controlling our relays. So if we know that we're using our circuit opening relay and our EFI main relay, let's look at where our, uh, our relay is getting actually power from. So we know that this here is a load. So we'll make our coil blue here and our coil blue here. Now that we know that those are our loads in those, because this is our control side of the circuit, what is feeding voltage there? So we've got coming down to this junction here, and this is gonna cross over here. This is our ignition switch. So as soon as you turn on ignition, this is where th this relay will close and allow us to go through the next relay, right? Now, let's look at the ground side of that part of the, that part of the relay. So if we're looking right there, I can see that my ground actually grounds out through my engine control module, you can't see down here, but it is written. It says engine control module. This whole piece here is my engine control module. But this is my ground side. So my engine control module is going to provide a ground to that relay. Let's do the same thing for the other relay here. This wire is actually gonna go all the way down. You guys can't see where I'm drawing here. But this, one is actually gonna go down into our engine control module to our EFI. Then coming out on the ground side, but if you actually look, we can see one and two. So one is our power, two is our ground coming out. They flipped it here, there's one and two. So those are some things that you can take a look at. So the ground for this relay comes through here and is also a ground, it shares a ground with our ignition relay that grounds out here. So it's constantly grounded. It gets power 
from, it switched power from our engine control module. When I have my key on, I should have power going in and nothing coming out. I should have power going in and nothing coming out. And with all that, I, uh, I wish I had another color here because I don't want red everywhere. But as long as those are working properly, I should close my switch. We know we've got power coming from here. And if my relay is working properly, I should have voltage at connections one and three, which will then lead into my circuit opening relay. And I should have voltage, as long as everything's working properly, at connections five and three coming out into my fuel pump. If my fuel pump is not working, the first thing I'm gonna do is test for voltage going into the pump. If I have voltage going into the pump, then I'm going to test to see if I have voltage coming out of the pump. If I don't have any voltage coming out of the pump, I'm going to replace the pump because it's not working even though it's getting voltage and ground. What you can even do sometimes is you can use a jumper box with a 12 volt jumper box and if it turns on, then you know it's not the pump that's bad. If it doesn't turn on, then you know that it's the pump. But in this case, if I have 12 volts coming in and zero volts coming out and my pump's not working, it's a bad pump and you would replace that. But let's say I don't have voltage going into my pump. Let's say I've got uh, no voltage coming into my pump I'm gonna check my relays. And since these are probably in the same box, it even says engine, um, let's see, on the left side of the firewall, I'm gonna have a little box with a bunch of relays in it. I'm gonna test these connections coming out of my relay. I wanna see, first things first, do I have switched power coming out at number three, probably can't see here. At number three, I should have voltage coming out. If I don't have voltage coming out, do I have voltage coming in at five? If I have voltage coming in at five, but not voltage coming out at three, now I need to see if my coil side's working. But let's say I have no voltage coming out at five and I have no voltage coming out at three. I need to back, back step that all the way over to this one. I should have voltage going in I'm gonna just erase that so you guys can see the numbers. I should have voltage coming in at five. If I don't have voltage coming in at five to my EFI main relay, then I should be checking my fuse first and foremost. If the fuse is good electrically and you've tested it, um, you did a quick voltage drop across it or available voltage and you know that it has 12 volts coming out of it, now I know it's a wire in between here. If I have voltage coming in, my fuse is fine, and I don't have voltage coming out at three, either the switch is bad or my coil side is not being actuated. So at that point, I'm gonna check, do I have voltage going into my coil at number one? If I have voltage coming in at number one, I should have no voltage coming out at number two. If I have voltage at number two, I know that there's an open circuit in between here and ground. If I do not have voltage, let's say I've got voltage coming in, but no voltage coming out, and my switch is still not working, my relay is bad. It doesn't matter what side of the relay, my whole relay is bad. So that's something that we're looking at here. Um, so it's these same basic principles that we're applying. And you can look at this entire circuit. If you look here, if you're, you're highlighting everything, we're only working in this tiny little chunk. Um, so it... it goes from being complicated to not very complicated. So uh, I'm hoping that this helps you guys out. Um, let me know if you have any further questions. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. Thanks guys.